Hello everybody, it's Austin D here, and today we're going to talk about why I think we're going to be getting Kalos DLC or a Kalos update for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in the future. I, I can't snap like he does. I hope you'll forgive my little joke of an opening there where I blatantly rip off another Austin, Austin John. If you haven't seen his content, please go check him out. He's amazing. <laughs> but anyway, shameless rip off aside, I am actually talking about why I think there is absolutely going to be, like I said, either a Kalos DLC or a Kalos update coming in the future for the Pokemon world. And it all starts with this. This is something we're introduced to in the post-game, well, sort of post-game, the, the finale of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, where, which is, it talks about a mysterious Pokemon we never get the name of, that's allegedly linked to the Terrastal Phenomenon. That's the phenomenon in the game where your Pokemon can change its typing through a process called Terrastalization. The power to do that comes from this Pokemon. So... The question becomes... Who's that Pokemon? And, uh, and it never really gives us too big of a description on the Pokemon. We only get very little. The first thing we get is that it has a shell made out of hexagonal plates. Which immediately reminded a lot of Pokemon fans, myself included, of the Pokemon Zygarde, which, if you don't know, Zygarde is the third legendary of Pokemon X and Y, and is, as you can see on its model, and all of its other forms, literally made out of hexagonal plates. In the game, though, these aren't technically called plates, as they're actually called Zygarde cells. And basically, a hundred Zygarde cells make up a complete 100% form Zygarde, with the first form we introduced to being the 50% form, and then also having a 10% doggo form. But, for the most part, we haven't really seen Zygarde all too much. They kind of, they introduced him in Pokemon X and Y. They sort of, kind of expanded upon him in the next games, Pokemon Sun and Moon. But then we never really got anything else. This even further perplexed everybody because of what we don't see of the Kalos region. The Kalos region, I know I've name dropped a bunch, but now I'm going to actually explain what it is, I promise. Uh, it's Generation 6. It was the games, it was the region that the games X and Y took place in. And it was in this Kalos region that we got introduced to things like Mega Evolution, Zygarde, all that. However, there was a very peculiar thing about this region. And that's that the entire south part of the region was always covered in clouds. It's covered in clouds on the map, it's covered in clouds on the in-game map, and it was just completely inaccessible. The most we get to see of southern Kalos is this one city. This one city you went, you went to by train in the post-game, and you were literally just locked to that city. That was the only part of Southern Kalos we've seen. And so, it's really weird and interesting that now we have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Because if you don't know, every Pokemon region is based off of some real-world area. And for Pokemon X and Y, the Kalos region was based off of France. If the literal Eiffel Tower is not enough proof of that. When Scarlet and Violet were announced and we got to see more info, it got really interesting for a second there. And it's still really interesting. If you don't know, Scarlet, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, their region, the region of Paldea, is based on Spain, which shares a border with, which shares a border on France's southern border. So you can actually see here on this map, it goes into a little tip, right where South Kalos would be, and it connects into Spain. And sure enough, on the Paldea map, guess what? Right along where France would be, 
in the real world, we see a, we see a small little indent, a little hashed out area of land. And if you go to that hashed out area in game, you find that it's separated from the rest of the game through a giant cliff. So clearly, there is land up there. There is something there for us to find. Or, not necessarily for us to find, necessarily, because it's not in the game yet. You can't climb this wall, there's no way to get up there. But that there is something up there that exists. There is land up there. Again, very similar to how the entire Kalos region that we see is mostly surrounded by mountains or cliffed edge going into the sea. This would make sense if it shared a border with the Kalos region. And on top of that, and so topping the geographical connections with the fact that it seems like they're referencing Zygarde in the game as part of the reason for the strange phenomena of the region. Very, very suspicious. And also, that's not even all of it. Because it goes even deeper. If you don't know, ever since Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon has had a weird problem where they, can't, they literally can't include every single Pokemon because eventually it would get to a point that just the data of all those Pokemon would eat into the actual available game data based on the limited cartridges that we see on the Switch. And so Pokemon ended up making the decision to just cut most of them. Cut all the Pokemon that are not absolutely required. And this has led to a, a series of Pokemon in each game called Transfer Only Pokemon, which are Pokemon that are allowed in the newest game, but they're not part of the Pokedex and they're not catchable in game. So the only way you can get them is by transferring them from another game. And the list of and the games Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were actually data mined. And it was found that there are some interesting Pokemon that made it onto that list. That transfer list for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, of course, all the starters of the previous main games, Sword and Shield, are still there. Because, obviously, Game Freak wants you to be able to take your partner Pokemon from previous games and still have them with you in the next games. So that's why they're there. So that's, those aren't necessarily interesting. That's kind of what we'd expect. There's also a decent number of legendaries, and of course, all the Pokemon from Pokemon Legends Arceus are there as well. Intentionally made as part of the transfer, so that way you can take, again, take your Pokemon from your most recent adventure, and slot them into your newest, your newest adventure. Uh, however, there were some other interesting notes on this list of the, that people were able to compile. First off is that all of the Kalos starters are programmed into the game. Now, this wouldn't be so peculiar once for the fact that typically, aside from the previous generation before it, starters were not making the cut for transfer only Pokemon. So the fact that they intentionally brought back every single Kalos starter and all three forms of them really seems to speak to the idea that they're going to be doing something with Kalos Pokemon coming up here in the near future for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And on top of that, another interesting thing of Pokemon that appeared is the Pokemon Carbink, who also originated from the Kalos region and is also weirdly a transferable Pokemon despite not having anything seemingly special about it aside from the fact that it came from the Kalos region. Now, Diancie is a mythical Pokemon, and so it could be that... And Carbink and Diancie are said to be linked in their Pokedex entries. So it could be that they just literally are linked, and so Diancie and Carbink have to come together. But I don't necessarily believe that to be the case. Sorry, I'm sure you heard the attention, the attention hog here meowing. But yeah, so, and then, and guess what? The connections go even deeper than that. Because as if the starters being in the game, in the game's code at least, 
wasn't sussy enough. Almost the entire Kalos Pokedex is in this game. Every single Pokemon that was originally unique to the Kalos region. Almost all of them make an appearance here. This includes a lot of the Pokemon that are already just catchable in game. This includes Pokemon we haven't seen in a while that don't necessarily feel like they have a ton of reason to be in the Paldea region, but are still fine exceptions, don't get me wrong. In fact, I actually ran the numbers on this. Simple coding. Of the game, 60 to 70 Pokemon are oh, oh, unique Pokemon, I should say. 39 of the game's 70 Pokemon are in the game. Either complete, most of them being completely catchable inside the game itself, and the rest being just purely transferable into the game. And so, and honestly, it wouldn't even be that much of a stretch to just add them in an update. Add the rest of the Kalos decks in an update or DLC. Because this is far shorter than the other Pokedexes we've had recently. This Pokedex for this game is only 400 Pokemon. Whereas Sword and Shield had about 5 to 600 as well. And so there's clearly space for them to bring in the other 20 to 30 Pokemon that they're missing. It's just very interesting that there are so many of the Kalos Pokemon in here. Especially when, like I said, a lot of them we just haven't seen in a while. Like the Fletchender line. And also... Well, I guess we haven't seen the rest. Uh, so we've seen a little, at least a decent amount. But still. And as if that wasn't enough, we now seemingly have even more proof that it could be the case because of the Terror Raid events. As I said in my last video, for those of you that didn't catch it, uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has had a ton of Terror Raid events, or what they're calling Terror Raid Spotlights. Each time spotlighting a new Pokemon that's either in the game's code or is available in-game. The first of these events was an Eevee event, which Eevee is just available in-game. But then they'll typically have seven star raid events that have so far been focused on starter Pokemon. And these seven star raid events are extremely hard. You can only encounter seven star raids as part of these events. Seven star raids are not in the base game normally. Because normally the game will only go up to six star raids. And so the first of these was Charizard, obviously, because Charizard is Pokemon's hype beast. Where they use Charizard to get people excited about the new game. And so Charizard was our first seven star raid. And then after that we got, we got into the new year, which is the year of the bunny. And so they used their only real bunny starter, which is Cinderace. So again, makes sense. Hi they have the hype beast because when the games launch to get people excited and to get people to come in. And then they have Cinderace to celebrate the year of the bunny. But now their latest seven their third and latest seven star raid doesn't seem to make a huge ton of sense at this time. And that is Greninja. Greninja is by far the most hyped up Kalos starter. Even before the Kalos games released, they had already made Greninja into Smash Brothers, make, making sure that people saw him. And on top of that, Greninja had a very crucial role in the anime, create, becoming a new sort of Pokemon called Ash Greninja by adopting this sort of bonding fusion synergy form in a similar method to, evo to Mega Evolution. And in fact, just like with Zygarde, in Sun and Moon, they even allowed players to get an Ash Greninja for their very own, with a special Greninja with the ability Battle Bond, which basically allowed it to, after it fainted a certain amount of Pokemon, turn into Ash Greninja. And, weirdly enough, 
Battle Bond is in this game. <laughs> it's not on any Pokemon currently, but they also, but not only is Battle Bond in the game, they also changed the ability. Where now, instead of after a certain amount of Pokemon fainting, it turns into Astro Ninja, and thus the move Water Shuriken gets a boost, and just the overall stats of Greninja get a boost. But now they've changed it to where now it's just every single every single time Greninja is able to faint a Pokemon, it raises its own attack and special attack. And the fact that they change it is especially odd, considering the fact that why would they change something that's not in the game? Now you could say it's for people who would transfer it in, but you'd think that if they were if it was just for the transfer. Why wouldn't they link it? Why wouldn't they still keep the Astro Ninja model? And so clearly, there is something else going on here. Something else plotted. And that's why I think there will be a Battle Bond Greninja, or at least a way to get Battle Bond onto a Greninja at some point in this game. Because they went through the active effort of bringing in Battle Bond and changing it and changing how it functioned. So clearly, they have a plan for it, or they're planning on people using it. As to what it's going to be used for, it's cur we don't currently know. It could be used for the Terror Raid, for all we know. Again, the fact that they're hyping up Greninja as the, as the ultimate challenge 7-star raid this time around is, again, really interesting. Especially since... Battle Bond Greninja, well, potentially Battle Bond Greninja, the 7 Star Raid Greninja, is going to take us into February. Which, as I said in my, as I also said in my last video, is when we're going to be getting a lot of updates for, for Pokemon. There's going to be an update to Pokemon Home, in order to, in order to add Scarlet and Violet battle data. It's going to be added to, po it's going to be, they're going to be having a big update, one point, the big 1.2 update. For Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is going to be, which is going to include bug fixes and improved functionality, and that's also the same time that we're going to be running out of ter of raid battles, and so they're going to need to be announcing the next one because initially, because now we have it slated into February, they're going to have their Terror Raid Spotlight, which is going to be Greninja. And then Greninja is going to take a break for a bit, and we're going to have Tandem Mouse Fairy type, and we're going to have a, ter a Tandem Mouse with a Fairy type, and then it's going to be Greninja one more time to give people one more chance before it goes away, and then we're left with nothing so far. Obviously, they're going to need to update us by February, and so it's my personal theory slash prediction that we are going to be getting a Pokemon Direct in February. That is going to be addressing the updates, it's going to be addressing the next Terror Raid battles, and it's also, also going to be addressing a new Kalos-related project of some kind. Because that is the only explanation I could think of for why they would bring in Greninja specifically. Because there are a lot of starters in the game's code. They still have the rest of the Sword and Shield starters, which is Inteleon and the Ape. I can't remember its name off the top of my head. They still have Diancie they could dip into for potential encode Pokemon for Terror Raid battles. And that's a mythical Pokemon, so that would definitely get people excited. And there's also and there's a lot more that they could they could heck, they could have kept going with the fire starter theme and done Fennekin instead of and, that, and on Fennekin and its evolutionary line, instead of Greninja. And so the fact that they switched over to Greninja, which is known to be basically the mascot Pokemon of the Kalos region, because of how popular it was, it really makes me think that they're intentionally using Greninja to hype up something Kalos related, coming in February, or at the very least, being announced in February. Now, as to what this is, I personally don't know. It could be, could be, a Pokemon, a update, an update 
slash DLC, like I've been saying, where they're going to do, where they're going to expand upon the already there Paldia region and maybe open up that little hashed out area to let us explore Southern Kalos. They could do that. Or, instead of having us explore Southern Kalos, they could also just... They could also just be making a straight-up Pokemon Legends Zygarde. Because it's very clear in this world that Zygarde has history that we don't know yet, regardless. And so it could just be that the next Pokemon Legends game is going to be Pokemon Legends Zygarde. Potentially. And it's just... And so, it could be... Or... They could go really out there and just skip Unova, and they could go ahead and be announcing Kalos remakes. It's very unclear at this time exactly what they're going to be doing, but I really do think that it's very clear at this point that in February, we are going to be getting something Kalos related. Which, honestly, I'd be really hyped for, because I really like the Kalos region. And we are definitely getting into the nostalgia phase for Kalos. A lot of people have been, a lot of people have been talking about Mega Evolution. A lot of people have been talking about missing Kalos. A lot of people have gotten really excited for Kalos for Kalos coming to Pokemon Masters. Which, if you don't know, Pokemon Masters is their yeah is their mobile app now, their main mobile app at the very least. And in Pokemon Masters, they're just ha they're just now having an event for Kalos, bringing in all the Kalos protagonists and even the Kalos villains. And so it's very clear to me that they are definitely gearing up for something Kalos themed or Kalos related. And honestly, I can't wait to see what it is. I'm excited. I really. And if I had to put my money somewhere, I'd probably lean into the idea of it being DLC. Because I don't see them making another game until this one's fixed. And so unless that 1.2... that So unless that 1.2 update is a really, really, really massive update, I think that they're going to instead focus more on fixing and working on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And that in this update, and that this update is going to just basically be priming Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for, for upcoming DLC. Which, by the way, is exactly what they did for Sword and Shield. In Sword and Shield, they had an update that basically primed the games, expanding the Pokedex, and, getting, and basically getting Sword and Shield ready for when the DLC inevitably released. And so it definitely... Feels like there's going to be DLC or an update themed around the Kalos region. And so that's where I'm putting my money currently. Is I'm putting it on Kalos DLC. But regardless, even if we don't get Kalos DLC, I still think it's going to be something Kalos related. It's going to be some kind of event. Or it's going to be Pokemon Legends again, like, like I said. It's going to be something along those lines. Part of me really wants it to be Kalos Remakes, because I would love Kalos Remakes, but I don't think, but I don't see them skipping over the Unova region like that. And so, I definitely think it's going to be more in line of either Pokemon Legends Kalos, or Pokemon Legends Zygarde, or something along that line. But again, like I said, I don't necessarily see them making a whole game, so like I said, my money is probably... A little bit more on DLC based on logic, but in terms of personal hopes, I'm hoping for either a Pokemon Legend Zygarde or a full-on Kalos Games remake. But, you know, we'll see what's to come. We don't know what's coming in the future yet, and I'm gonna be here to try and talk through it with all of you as much as you guys are here to talk about it with me. So please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And also, actually, one more thing I want to address is that I know that a lot of people have been saying that the letters on this textbook talking about the same third legendary Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet 
doesn't make sense to be Zygarde, but if you actually pay attention to the other letters that are missing in that same passage, you can notice that the blanks are actually inconsistent in how many letters there are. Because a lot of them will replace two letters, some of them will even replace three letters at times, and then other times they do only replace one letter. So it's very clear that the blanks are not substitutes in for this is the amount of characters, but that that name could still be anything, so it could still very easily be Zygarde. But with that, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, and I can't wait to see what you guys have in store, and I can't wait to see what Game Freak has in store. And uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here, because there's a lot of new people coming in. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, I guess we're ending it. See you later. <laughs>